This introduction is a way for me to convince you to read my blog, to look at it, to think about it. And that's not an easy thing to do because there are literally millions of bloggers out there. And why should you think I'm any better or any different than the rest? Well, let me give you some reasons. I was born in Canada in the middle of the 20th century, lower white Anglo-Saxon Protestant working class in Vancouver, uh, St. Paul's Hospital. My father worked in a sawmill on the Fraser River and I went to David Lloyd George Annex, then David Lloyd George Elementary School, Sir Winston Churchill High School, and Simon Fraser University. So as you can tell by the schools I went to and their names, we, I was very much a product of the British Empire. That was how I started out my life. Another important part of that childhood in my early years is the fact that my father was insane and a uh, sexual pervert predator which made for a very interesting childhood for me. Paranoid schizophrenic parents, or father, my mother wasn't, that are into physical and sexual abuse of every type with the children they have is uh, a very interesting way to grow up. Not one I'd recommend, I dare say, but it's interesting. Now... You go on from there, I uh, became an alcoholic, a biker, not an outlaw, just a biker. Uh, English motorcycles and uh, dreams of a Harley that never came true, but I had fun on the English. Then into Japanese and Hondas, Suzukis, uh, what have you. Eventually, I got married. Uh, I was about 25 years old, not too healthy in my mind. And then I ended up with my wife on a lighthouse called Ivory Island on the west coast of Canada. It was there that I had the time and the opportunity and the desire to start looking inside to try to understand what was going on. I also met two very important people in my life. Reverend Captain Oliver Howard and Reverend Bob Ferris of the United Church of Canada. They were part of the team that worked on the Thomas Crosby Five, which was a uh, mission boat for the United Church of Canada. They showed up about once every six weeks. They made me want to become a Christian, not because of their theology, but because of... Uh, What they did and had inside them, it intrigued me a great deal, made me want to become like them. And to make a long, long story very much shorter, I uh, then got to be a deckhand on the Thomas Crosby Five, where I moved into the ranks of intended candidate for the ministry. And then, excuse me for just a second, I've got to... Let my dog out. He, he seems to want to. There you go. Out you go, Coop. Okay. Well, that, that's part of a, the rest of this story. <laughs> You'll get to hear it. Allow me to just sneak in here. All right. There you go. I'm back. Uh, now I'm back. Uh, you may notice I don't have a shirt on. That's because right now I'm living in the tropics and it's warm. So I rarely wear anything other than shorts and sandals. Uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, Thomas Crosby, intended candidate for the ministry, which got me eventually, thankfully, uh, into Kitimat Village, uh, First Nation, west coast of Canada, otherwise known as the Heisla. And they uh, agreed to try to train me to become a village minister. Not an easy thing to do. Um, after I'd been there for a year or two, they adopted me into the Eagle Clan. 
which is where the name Gupsy Bees comes from, it means bringer of the gentle wind. It is a name that I have been given, had it laid on me, baptized in the Indian way. And I use it with pride and I hope respect and honor for the people that gave it to me. From there, I, uh, well, actually when I was there, I met the lady that would become my wife of 20 years this month. And skipping forward a whole bunch of the way, we ended up living in the Philippines, where she teaches at university in peace and development. She has earned herself a doctoral. I am a oh, steward of a small garden temple in our backyard. Sounds very whoopy bling. But basically, I just sort of go out and pray in it and keep the flowers looking good with help from my gardener and uh, work on myself and trying to bring good energy. Now, I'm a recovered alcoholic. Haven't been had a drink in 20 years, except for the time I got... Uh, <laughs> I got... Uh, done over in church once. They handed out communion and I took it and it's the only time I've ever had communion that was made from rum and coke. That's the only drink I've had in over 30, uh, over 20 years now. I don't know, maybe co close to 30. But I didn't grow horns and I didn't die from it. So I'm working on getting better in my head from my childhood. And all of this is Perhaps a reason you might want to pay attention uh, to what I say or write. It's not that it's going to be right, but it comes from not just book learning, although there is some there. It comes from a long life with a lot of problems where I found a lot of good people to help me. And I'm going to use this blog to try to pass along the understandings that were given to me that have helped me to overcome my childhood abuse not perfectly I mean that's that's a never-ending process to overcome my and control my alcoholism uh, my faith journey it's all about transformation the butterfly that's why my temple is dedicated to the goddess of mercy butterfly dragons and peace all about transformation and good things, I hope. So that's who and what I am, and I hope it entices you to maybe take a look at what I write, or what I record this way. And if it does, and you find something useful in it, that's good. And if you take a look at it and decide it's stupid or doesn't make sense to you, that's okay too. I don't have all the answers for everybody. I don't even usually have the answers for me. But I, <coughs> well, 30 years of smoking is not too good either, and there you go. I don't anymore for now, but if it uh, gets to the point where things get really bad, rather than have a drink, I do have a cigarette. But I've had that package for about four months, and it's not even half gone, so I don't smoke a lot, you might think. Or at least I don't think I do. So if you want to come along on this journey and see if you can find something that makes sense for you, I'll be pleased to have you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Love you all.